Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to Retired for Life. Today, we're going to get to work at putting this temporary uh, 10 foot square storage tent up. One of the things I want to check first is how these things will actually thread into the ground here. Now, as you know, I've got a real issue with rocks all over the place and that kind of thing. That is a constant problem. But this is where the cement slab was. So, I'm not sure what was underneath that cement slab. It may have all been dug out. It may all be sand. I really don't know. Uh, so let's try one of these and we'll see what happens. All right, so this is around the location where I'm gonna put it. So we'll just pick a random spot here. And as you can see, this, this is sand here. So I'm not sure how deep that sand goes or what we're going to find under here. All right, it went down in. Now, let's check and see what it takes to pull it out. That's actually pretty good. All right, I think we're gonna go with these things. All right, I have the English version of our uh, general purpose shelter made by Weatherfast here. Now, I have seen a lot of videos where people will take the uh, manuals and throw them away. I am not a fan of that. I never do that. I keep all the manuals. I get a new piece of equipment, new tool, something like that. I read the manual. There is times where it can seem really tedious and pointless, but then there's the times that you discover it has saved you. So let's have a look at what we have got. Okay, we're gonna get our box bring it over here, take our uh, tarp pieces out, throw them over top of the logs, and then start sorting through our pipes and see what we've got. Once I got all those laid out, uh, we'll bring you back and we'll start putting this thing together. All right, folks, we got all our pieces laid out, separated. Everything is ready to start assembling. First thing we want to do is put together the roof frame. So let's get started on that. So this thing is basically 10 feet long, eight feet wide, and that must mean it's 10 feet high, which is fairly high. All right, folks, here's my first watch out for when you're assembling these. It's not clear in the instructions. You've got these bolts here. You want to make sure You've got the round side facing out because that's the side, your, the outside is the side that your tarp is going to be going on. So you don't want that sticking out the other way or of course it's gonna tear your tarp. But Okay folks, here's where it can get interesting when you're working alone. Now, as you may have seen from my other videos, all of these storage tents, my drying tent, my two storage domes, I put them up by myself. They're way bigger than this. So hopefully this shouldn't be too much of a challenge. We'll see how it goes.
part of what makes these things so much easier to put together is to follow your instructions. They're not always perfectly clear, but they will give you a good guideline as to where you should be going. All right, so there's our poles and there's all our pieces that join them together. So I'm going to get these poles into position and then we need to start measuring up for square before we start doing any kind of anchoring down. All right, folks, so there's our frame all fully assembled. So one thing I noticed that I don't like about this setup at all is this center post has got nothing on it. No, t no kind of foot or anything. It's just the pipe sitting there. And I think that's a mistake. I, I'm surprised that they have done that. Uh, so what I'm going to do, for the time being anyway, is uh, put a board under there just so it's not disappearing into the uh, into the dirt. I think it's kind of ridiculous, but my opinion on that. So we've got this together. So the next thing that uh, we're going to do is get it reasonably square and then fasten the corners down using those uh, spiral in stakes. All right, folks, we are stopped cold here. I cannot get these twirly things to go down into the ground. There is just too much rock here. There's rock coming up everywhere. I can get it down about six inches and then it stops. There's a ridge that's running back along here that gets in the way. So that means we're back to the uh, method that I have used many times before patio stones. We'll get this cleaned up and then actually get lunch and we'll see what the rest of the day brings us. All right folks so there is plan B. Those uh, screw into the dirt lags did not work. So I've got a 24 by 24 patio stone for each corner and as I mentioned before I'm not thrilled that there is no foot on the bottom of this center one. So I've got a uh, 12 by 12 patio stone that I'm gonna just sit it on. That way it's not gonna just dig into the ground. It seems to be kind of a silly thing to leave out for this. But there's my patio stones. We're all ready to go with that. We're getting a little late in the day here today. Sarah and I are off for a walk. So I'm going to button things up and then tomorrow, which is Eclipse Day, I'm going to be out here digging little holes to put these in and get this fastened down and hopefully get it complete. All right, folks, so we're back at it again. So I've got my patio stones here ready to go and I'm not doing anything fancy, just going to set them into the ground a little bit and start fastening things down. We'll see how we go. The closest thing I want to do is make sure that things are reasonably straight and reasonably square. And that's it. Because like I say, this is all going later on, which means I have to take the whole thing apart later on. But that's all right. It's all part of the fun. All right, I'm going to put you folks into time lapse and then I'm going to get to work here and see if we can get these things in and start putting the cover on this thing. Well, here's a surprise, folks. I didn't realize that uh, this was coming today, but I've got a piece of equipment to unload.
Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying today's video. And if you have, I'd really appreciate the like, and I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, if you got any comments, suggestions, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get back to work. Well, there's the new tool that I was hinting about earlier. It is now here. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Manitoulin and Transport did a great job getting back in here and just backed it all the way down the driveway. No trouble at all. So we'll unload some of the extra pieces that I bought. I've got a couple of pieces for the sawmill in here. And of course there is the uh, bits and pieces for the chipper also in here. Okay, excellent. So let's see how it's boxed up inside here. Woodland Mills always does an amazing job at packaging their stuff up. I mean, inside a steel frame here, I don't see any damage at all on anything, so that's good. I just want to start taking this apart but let's get back to what we were doing so what I was trying to do was drill a hole in this cement for the Tapcon screws and just using my regular uh, DeWalt battery power drill but I was thinking it's not very thick eh, maybe I can get away with it but I couldn't so Got an extension cord out here coming from the power shed and uh, I've got my I've got my hammer drill ready to go this so what happens is as you're drilling into something like cement you get dust that falls down in does not clear and after a very short time your drill your drill tip will end up just riding on that dust and it's not cutting anything else. The hammer action gets past that dust. It basically knocks it out of the way kind of thing. Uh, and that is why a hammer drill works so much better in cement. All right, let's see here. If you keep running this drill on a standard drill, pushing away on it, trying to get through, what often happens is it will overheat and then your carbide bit or your carbide tip on it will actually fall out of the drill. Yeah, that makes a difference. First one in, so I'll put you back in a time lapse and we'll continue on here. All right, guys, we have our frame in place now. So next is to put on the two ends, but let me share this little trick with you. These things have got these pull straps that go through uh, that you use to crank everything tight in place with these. 
it's like a ratchet strap. But it's very easy to have these get slipped down inside here when you're trying to put them on just because of all the pulling and tugging to do. So take one of these things, drop it on through, and then right at the end of this lanyard or strap, tie a simple knot on there. This can't fall off and then it can't get pulled up back through, which can be a real headache. Just like that. All right, I'm gonna put you back in the time-lapse and we're going to put the uh, far end on. <laughs> Well, that was really pretty straightforward. They're uh, not difficult to put up. I've got one more job left to do here. There is the uh, separating rails that go along the bottom here. Let me give you a better look at that. So the last thing to do is to take these pipes out and then th thread them through here and fasten everything back together. That part is always a bit of a game, but we'll get her done. All right, I'll bring you folks back as soon as I'm finished that. Okay, folks, there we are. We got everything all set up. The only thing I have left to do here is uh, put some rails inside now for uh, stacking our lumber on. But yeah, good progress. Very pleased with it. It should do the job. The only catch that's remaining right now is the only saw blade I have that's usable is the one that's in the mill right at the moment. So that is close to being an issue, but tomorrow morning we're heading up to uh, pick up my sharpened blades and a few new ones, so we'll be in good shape. It's just a matter of getting out there tomorrow and picking it up. But for now, I'm gonna clean up all these tools and uh, get things tidied up and ready to get back into production again. So I think we'll call that it for today's video. I'm very pleased to get this thing up here. That means, as I say, I can start cutting those 10 foot logs and uh, we'll see what we get out of them. And of course, as soon as that's done, then all of this will come back down and we'll be moving it down to where the new shed is gonna go on the, uh, on the road to nowhere trail campsite down there. That'll be kind of fun to have that uh, up. I'm gonna set it up like a little, uh, besides being a workshop, it'll be a little cabin. Uh, if I want to escape down there for the night or whatever, I can, uh, I can take the ATV out with a little bit of equipment and uh, camp out there. It'll be fun. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that set up. So thanks very much for watching, folks. And don't forget, if you've been enjoying the videos, finding them a little bit interesting, uh, give them a like and share it around. And I would really love to have you subscribe to the channel. That would help a lot too. So remember to be safe out there, be good to each other, and we will see you out on the trails the next time. Now I can go down and look at that chipper.